Hi, House Beautiful. I'm Catherine Ormrod. Now come on in, let me give you a tour of my home. The minute I walked into this home, I could see its potential. I came on my own, actually. I wasn't with my partner. And I walked around the rooms. I was probably here for five minutes and I immediately put a proposal in. And really that's because the bones of this home are amazing. It's got really great square footage for both the area and for the price. And this is actually a rental home. And as soon as I moved in, I'd already got all of these ideas together, all of these mood boards. So I just went head first in and started making the improvements. When we first arrived here, it was a very basic IKEA kitchen, which had actually, I think, been put on carcasses of older kitchens. It, it was really difficult to even know where to scratch the surface here. And in the end, the solution has been vinyl. As you can see, all of the surfaces here have been covered in vinyl. What I did was completely change the, the kitchen cabinet. So I had MDF cut to turn them into like shaker style. So you can see here, you've got the relief. It was then painted in Rust-Oleum kitchen cabinet um, paint, which is specifically made for laminate. So you can paint it straight onto laminate and it is really, really fantastic. So because I couldn't, you know, totally redo the kitchen and all of that stuff to bring personality into this space, I've obviously used quite a bright palette, the dark blue and the terracotta. And I've also tried to bring in really a, a lot of decorative elements. So we've got a lot of fabrics in the kitchen. I've made these curtains and there are some matching stool cushions there. In this lovely hatch feature, we've got the shelving and on both sides, I've added this scallop trim color coded so on that side it's green this side it's blue i love collecting art around a theme and as you can see here these are my swimmers and what i love about doing this is whenever you move somewhere you can bring the collection with you almost pre-made i was born in munich this is a piece from munich olympics this was an amazing gift from my friend francis costello this is a gray marlin piece that i bought this is a jürgen teller piece and this is another hockney bit of a bum action there love about that so them all together they make such a gorgeous little combination um, and again bring me joy every day when i look at them in my kitchen So here we are in our downstairs bathroom and this was the last room that I actually approached in this house and in previous rentals I've always been really nervous about doing anything really to bathroom so this was a bit of a first for me. All of these tiles here are actually stickers. I stuck 420 vinyl stickers to each and every single one of the tiles in this room and cut them to size. The reason I love this tile, it's actually in our kitchen as well, but it has a kind of Portuguese-y feeling to it. And it completely transformed this space because this was very, very functional. It definitely had like no decorative elements whatsoever. And now it's probably one of the most useful rooms in the whole house when you've got young kids having a downstairs loo is so indispensable. I really wanted to bring artwork into the space. This was a beautiful piece which I felt lent itself really nicely to the palette which was this kind of orangey terracotta with a blue and then I made <laughs> this kind of silly to be honest little cafe curtain from some offcuts from Fermoy. I really love it though. It's things like this, these little touches which I think make spaces feel so personal. I also use some vinyl on this shelf here and you do sometimes look around and be like, I've basically clean filmed my entire bathroom but it's worked really well so I'm really pleased. So this room is our dining room. I guess it's the most formal space and whenever I entertain, this is where it happens. So if anyone follows me on Instagram and looks at all of my tablescapes, this is generally the location. But day to day, I actually work here. In fact, this is my seat. And the reason I love it so much is it has this double window aspect onto the street. It's bright. 
every single hour of the day. And what I wanted the space to feel like is quite a clean space. Obviously, there's a lot going on on the wall behind here, but if I look out, it's quite neutral. The palette is a little bit more limited than in other rooms. I love large scale artworks, as you can see here. These are two kind of blanket tapestries that I created by making these very simple frames and stretching the blankets over them. And when you're renting, things like this are amazing because they take up such a huge amount of space, but you can pick them up really with just one finger. They're really easy to move. You just bubble wrap them, throw them in the van and off you go. So I've been collecting art for as long as I can remember. And when I had no money, it was museum posters. And then, you know, as I've gone through my career, I've started to invest in things that I love. For me, the gallery wall will never die. So now we're in our main bedroom, and I think this room is a particularly good example of that high-low mix. And I really, really do try and look for things in all different kinds of places. So we've got the vintage rattan dressing table here, but like the little stool is a piece from Ikea, which I've just popped a little bit of foam on top and then covered. The curtains are expensive. I made them with fabric from Penny Morrison, but we've also got another Ikea piece, which I painted here. So I think it's that kind of mix of both the more expensive and the high street, um, independent designers and more big box store pieces that firstly make it realistic um, from a budget point of view, but also make a room feel very, very unique and individual because it's your eye and your lens that has chosen all of those different things from different places and no one else can really recreate that. And I think that's super special. And then with everything else, it was just finding those really gorgeous tones of greens and pinks and not just going for one, which I think can end up feeling quite bland, but having multiple tones within those two color families while actually keeping the walls obviously quite sedate because it's a rental and we had to agree the colors. If this were my own home, no doubt the colors on the walls would be a little punchier, but I think that's really the only difference. I do think it's so important to see every single part of a room as an opportunity to maximise space. So under this bed, I've got storage for coats, I've got storage for t-shirts, I've got storage for handbags. We've got a lovely little ottoman here and that keeps all of my hair products and beauty and all of that stuff. Drawers are all super organised and pretty full. But yeah, you know, it's a constant battle and I think you have to keep on top of it and quarterly I really do have a vet. I donate a lot to the mine charity shop on Chiswick High Road. So any locals, make sure you keep your eye out. Quarterly deposits sent over there. And yeah, really keeping on top of it and making sure that you still love everything that you're holding on to um, is probably my number one tip for keeping the storage situation under control. This piece is my favorite piece in the whole house. It's by Hester Finch. And I really toyed with not putting it here because obviously, unless you're doing a house tour, people don't generally come into your bedroom. But I decided that actually it's fine to be selfish when it comes to art. And I love seeing it here every day. The palette obviously is bang on for this room. I love her. I think she's so beautiful and she'll definitely be coming with me in my bedroom pretty much forever, I reckon. So we're now upstairs in my eldest son's room and like everyone with children will tell you kids rooms present such a challenge mostly because of the sheer amount of stuff they have and of course you can have toy boxes and chests and ottomans and all of those things but i personally find if you want to keep some level of control in the explosion upward storage is a really great option so i inbuilt these shelves in this room and I actually did it in my younger son's room as well and then use this Camilla Hampton zigzag trim there to bring a bit of a sense of fun. In this room I also made the curtains, I love mixing stripes 
So you'll see that also in my younger son's room, there are striped curtains in there. And there are also radiator covers throughout the whole house. It's an amazing way of bringing a good block of bold color into a room and also covering up unsightly rental radiators, which are the bane of many a renter's life. So we've got bunk beds in here and I will be completely honest about that. My son bullied me to the extreme into buying them and slept on the floor for over eight weeks in protest until I bought it for him. But it's already been in a couple of rentals. It's done really well. And whenever you have guests staying, it's an amazing option because both boys can come in here or you can take the mattress off of here and put it on the floor and an auntie or uncle can then share the room. So it, it really helps for flexible living, having a bunk bed. I don't think that artworks in children's rooms should just be like kids' art. It's nice to have a little bit of a mix of the sweet things in with classics, like we've got a Rothko over there. You know, bright, abstract colors are fantastic for children and, um, you know, begin their artistic education. So I, I love um, peppering a little bit of that into their rooms as well. Of course, my kids are still really young, so they're developing their personalities, but I'd say in lots of ways they're similar, i.e. completely out of control, but my youngest is probably a little sweeter and my eldest is probably a little more gregarious. So I feel in some ways the, the colour choices were maybe subconsciously influenced by that. Thank you so much for coming on this tour of my home with me and I hope you've really enjoyed everything. But hopefully you too have got a few ideas and even if you're renting, remember that temporary spaces always can be beautiful places.